So we've got another Neo Geo AES here. I've been doing a lot of work on the RGB mods for these. And this time I want to show you a specific issue with this version. This says Neo AES 3-6 on the revision. And you can see this area is different than the last version we worked on. So what I want to show you is if we turn this console on. And then we go to the actual white screen of the UniBIOS in this case. If we zoom in, hopefully the YouTube capture doesn't compress this too much. And you'll see these vertical lines. So this has got quite a bit of noise in it. If we put a game in, you can see the lines appearing all the way through, like the Neo Geo logo, and all the way in the graphics. So if we zoom in again, you'll see how this isn't perfectly clear. This should be solid white. And you'll see in the red especially there, look at all that noise in the red. So you can see that looks far from clean. So that's what we want to fix up. And that's the reason for most people doing things like bypass mods, where they simply go, oh, this chip's got noise on, let's just bypass everything, remove it all, and put a new amp on. Well, I prefer to try and keep the consoles as original as possible. So instead of doing that, let's actually find out what the problem is. You'll find this issue is in many consoles, Mega Drives, Master Systems, Neo Geos, and they're all very similar. Most of them use the CXA chip. And the issue comes, I'm pretty much certain, going to come from the composite crystal. So this crystal is used to modulate the composite chroma signal. And this crystal here is the input for the chroma signal, so it can modulate color. Let's just pull up the scope and let's take a look at where the issue is. So we should be able to see this on the scope. You've got the video chip here. And if you go to retro6.wiki, you'll have the pinout for this chip. And it goes a pin at the top and then red, green, and blue input. And then a pin at the top and red, green, and blue output. So let's just start by turning the console on and let's probe the red, green, and blue channels. And you can see the red there has quite a bit of noise on. The blue not so much and the green even less. So if we go to the red channel again and we just slow this down so you can kind of get a grasp for what we're looking at. So you've got... Of course, I capture one that's blank. There we go. You've got the line start here. So this is the start of a line. This is the sync pulse low. Then this is the red data, which should be a solid line, and it's completely filled with noise. And then another sync. So every sort of gap here is a line, and all this should be solid red, green, and blue. And because we're on a white screen, this should actually be a solid, completely flat line. And we've got some clear indication of noise here. So there's definitely an issue on the input, and then therefore, effectively, on the output it appears as well, even worse. So to try and identify this noise, visually on screen, because it's vertical lines, that's a very common symptom of uh, some kind of repetitive clock. And obviously there's a clock right here. So if we look at this clock here, and we reduce the voltage down, speed up the time, you can see we've got a clock here. So let's take a look at what happens if we overlay the two. So I'm gonna grab the second probe, I'm going to lower the first one back down to low voltage. Let's go on the red signal again. And with the second probe, I'm going to probe on that crystal. And you can see I've just got one probe on the uh, red input and the other probe on the crystal here. And now if we just freeze that and we take a look at this, you can see that those sort of pulses and drops seem to line up with the crystal. They seem to go out a little bit here. So if you notice the sort of drops are not quite center there, not quite there, perfectly center there, slightly off here. So the frequency isn't identical. And in fact, we can probably find out the frequency to some accuracy by looking for these drops. This frequency is about 4.2, whereas the frequency of the red is about 3.5. So it could be that we're looking for a different clock, or it could be that we simply have harmonics and reflections at play, which change the frequency of crosstalk. So what we'll have here is, I'd say almost definitely, this clock signal interfering somewhere with the lines of this chip. And this chip has this clock as an input. So one of these inputs here, and I believe it's actually the one after the blue signal. There we go. So this is the one after the blue signal. And you can see that lines up pretty much perfectly with, in fact, it does absolutely perfectly with the waveform. So this clock is going into the CXA chip, 
right next to the red, green and blue. But interestingly, the blue signal is actually the cleanest. So the blue has the least noise, then green has more, and then red is really bad. So let's just take a look at the traces. We know for a fact this CXA chip is fine because on the first revision board, this is super clean, perfect RGB. So there isn't an issue with this chip. This chip isn't noisy. There's an issue with the circuit board design. So if we look at, obviously, the crystal, let's just flip over to our bearings. The traces might well be under these chips, but let's just start with what we can see on the surface. So here are the two rows of the CXA chip. So we will be dealing with... Uh, red, green, and blue input on the bottom row here. Red, green, and blue go through these three caps. And they all converge here. And then they cross over this here. So what's this? This goes up and to a component, over and into the crystal, I think. So if that's going across there, is components. Yes, it is. It's these capacitors. And they are going to, yeah, the crystal in and out. So you've got here the ground, the red, green, and blue in, and the crystal in and out. The red, green, and blue are here through caps. Come out through these three traces. So that will be uh, red is here, green, blue. So red is the bottom line here. Then green, then blue. And this is the crystal in and out. So this one specifically is the input, so the stronger signal goes through a capacitor and then if this is a resistor on the other side which i think it is yeah it's a resistor here which is move that out of the way a 3k resistor and then it carries on somewhere we could check the schematic for this but it's not that important looks like it passes over here down and comes out of the third pin of this chip here so third pin on the right and that's this pin here so the third pin on this chip here so i'd say let's power this up again and use an oscilloscope to probe if those lines are actually the clock signal because if they are they are very close to our red green and blue so this is my suspect area here so if we turn the console back on and where are we red green and blue so these should be the red, green, and blue outputs, which you can see lots of noise on the red, some on the green, less on the blue. So, is this the crystal? Yes, it is. Look at that. And if we go to this one, it's even higher. So, that amplitude is massive right there. And there is a signal. And let's bring in the second probe again so we can do this properly. And we might find that that signal is the correct frequency as well. So... If I probe the red channel there and lower the voltage back down so we can see. Now if I probe that pin right next to it here. And if we capture that now, so I hold them in place and just capture one of them waves. And let's take a look. That now aligns absolutely perfectly. Every single pulse on that clock so we didn't have the right clock directly it wasn't that crystal but it was a clock signal coming derived from that crystal and now you can see that is absolutely perfect so that is definitely cross talk so the issue we're going to have and it was quite easy to spot and identify just follow the traces is these traces here for red green and blue output run under a clock signal so the clock signal comes from here travels up goes over to another chip up here but it also then goes up over into the CXA chip. So all we need to do really is either sever this trace here or here. I'd probably sever it at this point so that it carries on to where it should be. And then re-add the resistor further up. But ultimately we just need to move this trace away from the red, green and blue traces. So I'm just thinking we could lift this capacitor up and turn it around that then disconnects this trace and then we could remove this resistor and attach it and we could end up over here but once we remake this connection this trace is going to be live this is going to be a dead end so without a shadow of a doubt for any reason so no matter what we do we definitely need to destroy this trace here because this is a problem this is going to be a noisy line and it's a bad pcb design 
So let's just start by disconnecting this trace here so this just becomes an island. And I've just gone a bit further back there as well because I want to make sure that again, similar to the fact that this trace is close to this trace, we don't want any induced voltage traveling from here to this cut trace. So keep that trace nice and cut back. And no, nothing. So without that, it does need the pulse to actually do anything because it's a main clock. So we do need to restore that line, but one thing we can do is actually probe to see if that noise has gone off the red, green, and blue channel now, which it should have. We probe on here, and no, nothing's gone yet. So let's just flip over. So although the trace is cut here, and if we probe right here, there's no noise. If we probe on the red, however, there's still noise. So even though this trace runs close to here and is definitely a problem, we're still getting noise on the red, green, and blue. that cap pulled out we'll keep hold of him and now we'll be able to identify which side of the trace we need to be looking at so if we turn it back on and check out this side of the red still got noise this side and nothing this side so that's interesting so we have no noise on the input of the red so there's a tiny bit of noise on there but the fact is, it's it's more noise, a lot more noise on this red. Is this coming backwards through these channels? So this is red, goes up here, so red, green, and blue. So let's just make sure this trace has not got a clock. Ah, there you go. That trace has got a clock on as well. So this trace comes up, goes up here, runs alongside this red trace as well. So there's your other issue. This has also got a clock trace running here. So again, instead of trying to cut red, green, and blue, you want to try and just divert a single clock line instead, which would be much easier. You can see these are all clocks. Ah, yeah, that's not a good sign. So it's actually probably easier to redirect these three wires completely from where they're going, because these three all pass through a clock, a clock, a clock, a clock, a clock. There's now five pins of clocks running here, which are causing induced voltage basically cross talk between these traces so i think what we can do is we can reinstate this one i guess because we're not concerned we're not going to use these three traces anymore and what we want to do is probably lift these three caps up and send the outputs instead of through here through to the destination so it goes through here over up across to these three vias and by the time we're here hopefully this isn't a clock nope so there's no noise there. This isn't, this isn't. Well, we'll cut these three traces so it doesn't matter or see where they go. But it looks like we can join up over here. So let's figure out a plan. And we'll start by just reinstating this trace here. So let's just try and figure out what we're gonna do here then. So the noise is coming in on the input side. So we have these traces that run all the way over here, which is where the noise has been picked up. And these are the input caps for red, green, and blue going into the chip. And they should come from the voltage divider circuit. So these 3.1 caps are these three caps here, the blue caps on the other side. So they are these caps here, those three caps. And these caps are picking up noise on this trace here. So between the 6.8K or part of it, between the cap and the 6.8K. So we can see the 6.8Ks are here. And the caps are here. So where are they joining? Because these three should all join to these three networks here. So they should all be joined. And you can see they are right here. So this is the red through the cap to the voltage divider network here. This is the blue through the cap. And I can't see, but I'm guessing there's a trace here to this voltage divider network. This will be the green through the cap. And I bet there's a trace there. So I bet if we bail out on continuity, these two are joined, these two are joined which this means good news for us if it's what I think it is. So this will be ironic when you see the solution. Yep, so that's joined, that's joined. So you're gonna love this for a fix and it's quite ironic of the problem. So the AV port's here, the red, green and blue input's here, 
goes from the resistor divider network up to here, out, and it's all clean here. The noise comes from these lines here. Well, what are these lines doing? They go along here, past the clock rail, over here, trace another five clock rails, pick up tons of noise, go to here, flip the board over, and what do we have? Test points. So NTSC only, maybe we'd need these for NTSC, but these are not used on this board. They're literally dead and not even populated. So the solution is going to be incredibly simple. This board doesn't use these three traces here because they go off to a non-existent point and that's where all the noise has been picked up. So all we've got to do is sever these three traces that don't get used at all on this board. And remember what I mentioned about the crosstalk. You don't want to do small cuts like this because that can still jump. This rail is going to have noise here as well. So I'm going to take back quite a lot. And we might even want to just obliterate these traces if you wanted to, to remove noise. But I'm just going to remove them a bit further back than that. So that's them traces well and truly obliterated out the way. So the three traces still connect to where they should, which we can validate that with a multimeter that they go to the AV output pins down here that blue goes to there the green there and the red you can see the trace anyway so that should mean if we now plug this into the output there we go we have what looks like to my eye completely pure white we've obviously got to fix the uh, voltage levels on this board like the other one let's just zoom right into that and yeah even zoomed in you can't see noise so I'd say there's probably still a little bit of room for improvement, but that now is very close to clean. So you can see the jail bars have now gone completely. And I think we're left with a checkerboard pattern. I'd have to compare this to a uh, previous capture. And yeah, looking at the capture, this was obviously set up to Japanese, the other one, so a different game plays, but I can't see any checkerboard pattern there. I can't see it on the intro screen. So I think... This checkerboard pattern here at the top that you just saw uh, is another thing to clean up. So let's just end this video here. And you can see how we identified and found noise. It was fairly easy to use the scope and find out where noise comes in. Remove caps to realize it's this side of the trace, not the other side. And look at the schematic to know that noise has come in on these traces here. And you can see why it's come all through here. We now have another issue where we have slight bit of crystal noise. And you'll see here the crystals are here. The resistor network's here and passes over here. So we'll track back that further. And I'm guessing it's going to be something in this area is also too close to the output. And we'll come up with a fix for that. My quick fix was to just disconnect these lines because they're not used on this board. But if you want to do kind of no cut fixes, you can just lift these three caps up, lift these resistor networks up in the air and solder them on the other side of the board. That would keep your circuit board fine. But in my eyes, the circuit board would float but in my eyes, the circuit board's flaw because this has this fault and it always will. So I'd prefer to remove this trace to prevent this ever being an issue. And these traces should never be on the board adding noise here anyway. So that would be my preferred solution in this case. But that's left up to you guys. At least you know now what causes vertical jail bars on the Neo Geos. And if you get them on yours, know to look for interference from the AS04 or the 78HC04 chips. And then to look at checkerboards next, we're going to look at the crystal circuit. So that's it for this one, guys, and I'll catch you in the next.